The regular meeting of the Minneapolis City Council from March 10th, 2022 will now begin. Good morning. My name is Andrea Jenkins and I am the president of the Minneapolis City Council. And I am going to call to order this regular meeting for Thursday, March 10th. Before we proceed, I will note that we have remote participation by council members and city staff as allowed under the Minnesota Open Meeting Law, Section 13D.021, due to the declared state of local public health emergency. The city will be recording and posting this meeting to the city's website and YouTube channel as a means of increasing public access and transparency. I will now ask the clerk to call the roll to verify the presence of a quorum. Council Member Koski. Present. Council Member Shugtai. Present. Council Member Chavez. Present. Council Member Ellison. Here. Council Member Vita. Present. Council Member Rainville. Council Member Wansley Warlaba. Present. Council Member Goodman. Present. Council Member Johnson. Present. Council Member Osman. Here. Council Member Payne. Present. Council Member Rainville. Vice President Palmasano. Present. President Jenkins. Present. There are 12 members present. Let the, re the record reflect that we do have a quorum and I did hear from Council Member Rainville. He is having technical difficulties and will likely be joining us very soon. Um, before we take up business manners, we do have an honorary resolution to present this morning. Um, and I will now invite and recognize Council uh, Vice President Palmasano for the presentation of an honorary resolution honoring Women's History Month. Council thank Vice you. President. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, thank you for being with me here today, celebrating International Women's Day and honoring Women's History Month with this resolution. Um, I think we all know, but it deserves saying again, um, that especially for Black Indigenous people of color and transgender women. Um, the barriers to equity in our society are great. The pandemic has made this even worse. Um, and there's still a lot to be done, so it's important that we take just a moment to, to recognize that. I will read the first half of this and hand it back to my colleague, and then she will hand it over to Karen Moe and others that are here to say a few words about our women's resource group here at the City of Minneapolis. So, um, whereas Women's History Month traces its beginnings back to 1911 with the creation of International Women's Day and Congress designating March 1987 as Women's History Month, and whereas the month of March is observed nationally as Women's History Month to promote equality and celebrate women's roles in history and society, and whereas Women's History Month acknowledges and honors numerous past and present educators, scientists, activists, pioneers, leaders, artists, inventors, entrepreneurs, and elders with special ceremonies and activities. And whereas on March 10th, we will celebrate International Women's Day with the theme Break the Bias, which imagines a gender equal world free of bias, stereotypes, and discrimination. And whereas we can collectively break the bias by actively calling out gender bias, discrimination, and stereotyping each time we see it, and whereas we can break the bias in our communities, we can break the bias in our workplaces, and we can break the bias in our schools. And whereas we acknowledge that the women's movement has historically left out black, indigenous, transgender, and women of color. And whereas we choose to reflect on these movements and challenge the narrative going forward. And whereas we continue to face multiple pandemics caused by the coronavirus, racism, and violence, and BIPOC women are disproportionately impacted as they stand at the intersection of these compounding barriers. Now I'll go ahead and turn it over to Council President Jenkins. Whereas the Women of Minneapolis Employee Network, WOMEN, will celebrate Women's History Month 
with events throughout the month that choose to break the bias and celebrate Black, Indigenous, transgender, and women of color by centering our events on their words and perspectives. And whereas all city employees are invited to call out gender bias with women in order to begin building a better and more equitable city enterprise. And whereas women employees make up approximately 31.5% of the city of Minneapolis's workforce. And whereas the city of Minneapolis leadership strives to create an organization where women, especially black, indigenous, transgender, and women of color are equitably represented and thriving across departments and roles. And whereas to support women in the city of Minneapolis enterprise, women was formed in 2017 as an employee resource group for those interested in the advancement and empowerment of female employees. And whereas women envisions a working environment in which women employees are informed, empowered, and confident in their access to the resources they need to accelerate their careers. And whereas all women are leaders, regardless of their formal roles or leadership positions. And whereas women offers city employees um, lean in circles for peer support, networking opportunities, and policy resource group. And whereas women will continue offering the city of Minneapolis recommendations on action steps to support women employees in the city's workforce and develop their diverse voices and needs in city initiatives. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the mayor and city council do hereby commemorate the achievements of women and their role in the development and history of the region and the nation. And we join in recognizing the annual celebration of Women's History Month. Passage day, the 10th day of March, 2022. And I am so pleased and proud to um, um, introduce and welcome interim um, director of NCR, Karen Moe, to share a few words on behalf of the women organization and and the 31.5% of women who work for the city of Minneapolis. Ms. Mo. Good morning. And it is our honor to have Council President Jenkins and Council Vice President Palmasano read the resolution on behalf of all women employees this morning. Thank you so much. My name is Karen Moe. I am Interim Director of Neighborhood and Community Relations, and I have the honor of being the executive sponsor of the Women ERG. And I'm going to introduce. I'm Tony Frazier. I'm the chair of the Women ERG group. I would like to thank uh, Council members and you, Council President Jenkins and Council Vice President Pomsano, for reading this resolution into the uh, the meeting, and we appreciate you on behalf of all ERGs. I would like to say thank you and continue to break the bias. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you both, and uh, thank you, um, Council Vice President Pomsano, for sharing in the reading and. Um, want to wish all the women um, that work for the city of Minneapolis, but also all the women of the city of Minneapolis, um, happy um, Women's History Month. Mm -hmm. um, and as we continue to try to, to make this city, this state, and this nation a better place for all of us to live. And with that, I will now return to uh, today's agenda and um, unless some of my colleagues wanted to speak, I'm sorry I didn't provide that opportunity um, before. Is there anybody interested uh, in wanting to speak to this resolution? 
seeing none, um, I will then um, acknowledge that we have been joined by Council Member Rainville. Council Member Rainville, if you want to just voice your uh, presence so that we can affirm. Thank you, Madam President. I was having some technical difficulties in my office, but I am in the meeting now. Thank you and welcome. The agenda for today's meeting is before us, and I will ask my colleagues if there are any amendments to the agenda. Seeing none, I will entertain a motion to adopt the agenda. So moved. Second. That motion has been um, moved and seconded. I will ask the clerk to call the roll. Council Member Koski. Aye. Council Member Shugs, aye. Aye. Council Member Chavez. Aye. Council Member Allison. Aye. Council Member Vita. Aye. Council Member Rainville. Aye. Council Member Wansley Warlaba. Aye. Council Member Goodman. Aye. Council Member Johnson. Aye. Council Member Osman. Aye. Council Member Payne. Aye. Vice President Palmasano. Aye. President Jenkins. Aye. There are 13 ayes. That carries and the agenda is adopted. The first item is the acceptance of minutes from our regular meeting on February 24th. Um, I have a motion to accept those minutes. So moved. Seconded. The clerk will now call the roll. Council Member Koski. Aye. Council Member Shugtai. Aye. Council Member Chavez. Aye. Council Member Ellison. Aye. Council Member Vita. Aye. Council Member Rainville. Aye. Council Member Wansley Warlaba. Aye. Council Member Goodman. Aye. Council Member Johnson. Aye. Council Member Osman. Aye. Council Member Payne. Aye. Vice President Palmasano. Aye. President Jenkins. Aye. There are 13 ayes. That carries and those minutes have been accepted. Finally, we have the referral of petitions, communications, and reports to the proper community committees. May I have that motion, please? So moved. Megan. The clerk will call the roll. Council Member Koski. Aye. Council Member Shugtai. Aye. Council Member Chavez. Aye. Council Member Ellison. Aye. Council Member Vita. Aye. Council Member Rainville. Aye. Council Member Wansley Warlaba. Aye. Council Member Goodman. Aye. Council Member Johnson. Aye. Council Member Osman. Aye. Council Member Payne. Aye. Vice President Palmasano. Aye. President Jenkins. Aye. There are 13 ayes. The first order of business that that carries and those um, matters have been referred and the first order of business is the reports from our standing committees. And the first committee to report this morning is the Business Inspections, Housing and Zoning Committee. Um, that report would be presented by the committee's chair, Council Member Goodman. Thank you, Madam President. The Business Inspection, Zoning and Housing Committee is bringing 10 items for approval this morning. Item number one is a land sale at 1910 25th Avenue North. Item two is a land sale at 2807 2811 Emerson Avenue North. Item number three is a rental license revocation at 2527 10th Avenue South. Item number four are the liquor license approvals and five are the liquor license renewals. Item six are gambling applications for Minneapolis Hockey Association. Item number seven is an appointment to the Heritage Preservation Commission. Item number eight is a rezoning at 3122-3128 Minnehaha. Item number nine are our Great Streets Business District Support Grant Agreements. Uh, there are a number of excellent organizations that we're working with on these business support agreements listed in the agenda. And item number 10 is accepting 
uh, grants from the Met Council's tax base revitalization account, as well as their seeding equitable economic development program, uh, as well as accepting Hennepin County's environmental response fund grants and authorizing contracts with both of them to be able to accept those grants. With that, I'll move items one through 10 for approval this morning. Thank you, Councilmember Goodman. Um, and Councilmember Goodman has moved the approval of this committee's report. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, the clerk will call the roll. Councilmember Koski. Aye. Councilmember Shugtai. Aye. Councilmember Chavez. Aye. Councilmember Ellison. Aye. Councilmember Vita. Aye. Councilmember Rando. Aye. Councilmember Wansley Warlaba. Aye. Councilmember Goodman. Aye. Councilmember Johnson. Aye. Councilmember Osman. Aye. Councilmember Payne. Aye. Vice President Palmasano. Aye. President Jenkins. Aye. There are 13 ayes. That carries and that report is adopted. The next report will be from the Committee of the Whole, which will be presented by its Chair, Council, Vice President, Palmasano. Thank you, Madam Chair, Madam President. We have one item that we're bringing forward from Cal for approval today. It is the appointment of council members to various boards, commissions, and committees. This adds one additional appointment, and I'll submit that um, for approval. This is specifically about an additional appointment for heading home Hennepin. Thank you, uh, Council Vice President. And is there any discussion? Is there any discussion? Say now, now I'll ask the clerk to call the roll. Council Member Koski. Aye. Council Member Shuktai. Councilmember Chavez. Aye. Councilmember Ellison. Aye. Councilmember Vita. Aye. Councilmember Rainville. Aye. Councilmember Wansley Warlava. Aye. Councilmember Goodman. Aye. Councilmember Johnson. Aye. Councilmember Osman. Aye. Councilmember Payne. Aye. Councilmember Shagtai. Aye. Vice President Palmasano. Aye. President Jenkins. Aye. There are 13 ayes. That item carries and that report is adopted. Next, we'll have the report from our Intergovernmental Relations Committee, chaired by Council Member Johnson. Thank you, Madam President. The Intergovernmental Relations Committee is bringing three items forward today. The first is support for local decision making authority in housing and development, and that's a resolution. The second is a resolution in support for Minneapolis educators. And the third item is a series of amendments to our 2022 legislative agenda and policy positions uh, related to no knock warrants, body worn camera data, and peace officer records. I will go ahead and move the full committee report and stand for any questions. Thank you, uh, Council Member Johnson. Are there any questions? Seeing none, I will ask the clerk to call the roll. Madam President, I believe that Council Member uh, Wansley Warlaba just jumped in queue. <laughs> oh, thank you. I'm sorry I missed that. Council Member Warlaba. W Wansley Warlaba. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Madam President. Um, I just wanted to speak to item number two around the MFT resolution um, and just want to give many thanks uh, to uh, Chair Johnson for uh, working very closely with my office to uh, make this a resolution that I think is reflective of our city's values and those values being that we stand with workers and that we are a union friendly city. Um, so thank you so much, uh, Chair Johnson, for, you know, helping us get to this point and for everyone who provided feedback um, on helping us sharpen um, this this resolution. And I hope to see, I know many of you are have been out there since uh, the strike was, you know, launched on Tuesday, but can't wait to see many of you all on the picket lines. Um, and that's all. Thank you, Council Member. Uh, is there any further discussion? 
Any further discussion? Seeing none, I will now ask the clerk to call the roll. Councilmember Koski. Aye. Councilmember Shuktai. Aye. Councilmember Chavez. Aye. Councilmember Ellison. Aye. Councilmember Vita. Aye. Councilmember Rando. Aye. Councilmember Wansley Warlava. Aye. Councilmember Goodman. Aye. Councilmember Johnson. Aye. Councilmember Osman. Aye. Councilmember Payne. Aye. Vice President Palmasano. Aye. President Jenkins. Aye. There are 13 ayes. That item carries and the report is adopted. The next report will be from our Policy and Government Oversight Committee, chaired by Council Member Ellison. Thank you, Council President. The Policy and Government Oversight Committee has uh, 26 items uh, to be considered by the Council today. Uh, item number one is uh, the approval of the 2022 Local Board of Appeal and Equalization. Uh, item number two is an agreement with Sundial Solar for purchase of renewable energy, uh, electricity. Item number three is a bid for diamond grinding of streets. Uh, item number four is a request for proposal for life and disability insurance and leave management administration. Item number five is contracts with the Twin Cities Recovery Project, Core Data, Coranda O'Toole Paramedics Incorporated, and your path to develop, implement, and expand comprehensive programs in response to illicit opioid abuse. Item number six is contract with Bloomberg Finance LP for Bloomberg Terminal Subscription Services. Item number seven is a contract with Certified Languages International LLC for remote uh, phone and video interpreting services. Item number eight is a contract with Element Inc. for project management services for the Upper Harbor Terminal Redevelopment Site Project. Item number nine is, a, is an agreement with the National Collegiate Athletic Association, uh, the NCAA, for municipal services. Items 10 uh, through 25 are uh, legal settlements uh, related to workers' compensation claims. Uh, and um, item number 26 is uh, support for Star is a resolution uh, support supporting Starbucks workers. And I will move the committee report and stand for any questions. Thank you, Chair Ellison. Is there any discussion? Councilmember Wanzali Warlabach. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I would like to pull items 14 and 20 and also a motion to amend item 26. Um, is there a, an amendment? Yes. Um, in for if we are starting with item 26, um, there's an amendment to reflect uh, the changes uh, to the title after uh, speaking with council member uh, Andrew Johnson. Um, I would like to change that title to expressing support for workers at Starbucks who are attempting to form a union and urging Starbucks to agree to non-interference principles. Do we have this amendment in writing? Council yes, Member? I can absolutely share that with you. Um, I know me and Johnson finalized that last night. Um, so I will have my team also forward that to the clerks. Yes, for, for future, we, we, we do need those for the public record and as well as um, um, council members. So, uh, we'll take up. So first, we will take up the committee report from Council Member Ellison, excluding items 14 through 25. And I will ask the clerk to call. Madam, the vote. Madam President, just to clarify, I, I want to be very clear on the change. The report was brought forward. I heard Councilmember Wansley Warlaba ask to pull three items discreetly, 14, 20, and 26. 
Are you adding to that all of the items between 14 and 25, Madam President? I, I, I misheard her. Um, I think I thought she said 14 through 25, but I did not realize it was 14 and 25. 14, 20, and 26. And if that's uh, amenable with you, Madam President, is understanding the change, I can go ahead and call the roll on all other items that were submitted from the POGO Committee except items 14, 20, and 26. Thank you, Clerk Carl. All right. Let's call the roll. Councilmember Koski. Aye. Councilmember Shaktai. Aye on all except items 10 through 13, 15 through 19, 21 through 25. Councilmember Chavez. Councilmember Ellison. Aye. Councilmember Vita. Aye. Councilmember Rainville. Aye. Councilmember Wansley Warlaba. Aye. Councilmember Goodman. Aye. Councilmember Johnson. Aye. Councilmember Osman. Aye. Councilmember Payne. Aye. Councilmember Chavez. I on everything except 10, 10 through 25. Vice President Palmasano. Aye. President Jenkins. President Jenkins. Aye. Sorry. There are 13 eyes on the report for items 10 through 13, 15 through 19, 21 and 25. I have nay from Councilmember Shuktai. And for uh, all items 10 through 25, I have a nay from Councilmember Chavez. That item carries and that report is, a, that portion of the report is adopted. Next, I will ask the clerk to call the roll on um, Again, is it items 10, 20, 14, and 25? 14, 20, and 26. So if we want to take them in order, I just have item number 14 in front of us. Yes, let's take them in order. 14, 20, and then 26. Yes, thank you. No, nope. Council Member Koski. Nay. Council Member Shugtai. Nay. Councilmember Chavez. Nay. Councilmember Ellison. Sorry, that I'm a little confused by what's going on in the chat. Um did did Councilmember Wanzi Warlover want to speak on this item? I did, yes. Okay. Sorry. And the roll call proceeded. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't mean to interrupt the roll call, but I just was noticing that and wanted to see if I was yeah I I do apologize to all um I thought you were putting your name in the queue um I thought you were just making a message council member that you were developing the I understand only one amendment or sending the amendment so please proceed with your comments thank you um so I just wanted to speak to you as some the person who pulled these specific items, item 14 and 20. Um, I understand that these are workers comps cases and I know they're difficult to navigate. Um, I've also voted to approve these in the past um, and you know, was informed that the city will be obligated to pay the claims regardless of our approval and it could be potentially, uh, you know, we would have to potentially pay a higher amount um, than the proposed settlements if we voted them down. Um, that being said, said, I pull items 14 and 20 and we'll be voting no on these items because I find it very disturbing uh, to see the names um, behind these two um, items um, as these individuals have a long history of public docu uh, documentation of either misconduct that has led to the city paying out uh, settlements and have throughout their entire time within MPD fought against reforms to MPD 
um, in their policy changes. Uh, that will ultimately help increase more transparency and accountability within the department. So, you know, I support workers' rights, hence why I even, uh, you know, led the charge to, uh, you know, bring these resolutions for Starbucks workers and our educators, um, you know, as frontline workers. But um, I also believe that, you know, we must also, as a city, prioritize addressing our extensive history of uh, allowing officers, law enforcement officers to engage in misconduct without any type of reprimand or accountability. Um, and I know the mayor has so over, you know, authority over MPD, but this is a, a opportunity for us to really look at how we can become better at addressing accountab accountability issues that's leading us time and time again um, to have to pay out millions of dollars in workers comp settlements or, you know, other settlements where you, we've had residents who've been harmed by MPD. So I wanted to give that context for why I'm voting on, uh, voting no to items 14 um, as well as 20. Thank you, council member. And I do apologize to the clerks. I know this is uh, interrupting um, a vote, which I, I don't know if I've ever seen that happen, so my my apologies. Do we start the roll call all over again, or? Yes, Madam Chair, it's uh, improper to interrupt a roll call. It stops, uh, debate is supposed to start, uh, stop, stop once we start a roll call, so I'll start again. Council Member Koski. Oh, I'm sorry, I just saw that somebody else went into the queue there for debate, I thought, or question. I see no one in queue as a as a question. Okay, sorry. Um, I. Council Member Shugtai. Nay. Council Member Chavez. Nay. Council Member Ellison. Aye. Council Member Vita. Aye. Council Member Rainville. Aye. Councilmember Wansley Warlava. Nay. Councilmember Goodman. Aye. Councilmember Johnson. Aye. Councilmember Osman. Aye. Councilmember Payne. Aye. Vice President Palmasano. Aye. President Jenkins. Aye. There are 10 ayes and three nays. That item carries and the next Item is uh, number item number 20. And is there any discussion? Councilmember Ellison. Uh, thank you, Council President. I uh, uh, just want to appreciate my colleagues who who are taking the time to vote against these 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 uh, these settlements. Um, I think that they're generating a really important conversation that we need to have around uh, uh, around this issue. I know that the community is frustrated to see these come through. Um, you know, I, I support, I voted for 14, I'll vote for uh, uh, number 20, uh, but I wanna make it clear that I'm voting for these items because um, my understanding from staff who, who, who I trust to, to, to engage on these issues uh, is that we're only gonna subject, you know, uh, um, our, our constituents to paying larger settlements uh, with their tax dollars. And so uh, that's the only reason I'm voting for these items. Uh, but otherwise, I think that the, 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 the calling of attention to these items, um, the, uh, and hopefully generating some needed discussion, uh, especially with the state where state law changes occurred uh, that are making us sort of not only Minneapolis, but cities all across the state. Um, uh, are subjecting us to these to these uh, these payouts that are are turning out to be uh, pretty untenable. Um, you know, I, I think that that's a needed discussion, uh, and I think that it's good that these items not go by um, at committee or at our uh, or at our full council meeting uh, quietly. Uh, and so, uh, just wanted to state that for the record uh, uh, and and validate the, the 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 nays that these items are getting, uh, even even though. Um, you know, uh, even though I've, I'm continuing to support them because I want to make sure that we're saving taxpayers money. 
Thank you, Council Member Ellison. I put myself in queue just to echo your comments and um, and really, um, you know, affirm that yes, these are very um, deeply disturbing um, items to have to vote in affirmative for. Um, these are workers from the city um, who have. Um, in many instances, um, misuse the the city's trust and has um, um, resulted in in costing our taxpayers um, um, millions of dollars in 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 damages and lawsuits, etc. Um, however, we do, as um, Council Member Wansley Warlaba stated earlier have a value and a, a commitment to the workers, um, supporting workers. These laws are um, a part of that. And so we have a fiduciary responsibility to try to limit the exposure to the city as much as we can. And, and consequently, as you stated, Council Member Ellison, um, the reason why I am voting in affirmative of this too and this is a very important conversation to have. Um, and, you know, it's unfortunate that we can't have it more robustly, um, but thank you for your comments. And then I see in queue Council Member Payne. Thank you, Madam President. I just wanted to echo the sentiments shared by you, yourself, by Council Member Ellison and Council Member Shugtai um, and others. Um, this is a huge concern. I, I am voting yes on these because we do have this fiduciary resp responsibility. And I also want to bring to this body uh, the theme that we really need to recognize the true cost of how we approach public safety today. And this is a part of that cost. And that cost is not just borne out in the, the, the salaries, wages, and benefits of our staff. This is borne out in the workers' compensation claims and other legal settlements that um, are a result of how we approach public safety. And this is something that I want for the public record and for our community to engage in is let's really think about how much it costs to approach public safety the way that we operate at this time. And let's think about do we want to operate differently? And I think this is a moment to start that conversation, especially with, you know, we have these uh, workers' comp claims coming through almost every cycle. We have a closed session to talk about other legal matters almost every session. Many of those topics do have a component of public safety to them and legal settlements associated with it. And so I just want this to be a start of a deeper conversation as we uh, engage the rest of this term. This is not a one cycle conversation. I think this is going to unfold over many cycles and I hope that we can all start thinking about what is that true cost of public safety and is it an appropriate approach right now given those true costs? Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Payne. Seeing no further discussion, I'll ask the clerk to call a roll on item number 20. Councilmember Koski. Aye. Councilmember Shugtai. Nay. Councilmember Chavez. Nay. Councilmember Ellison. Aye. Council Member Vita. Aye. Council Member Rainville. Aye. Council Member Wansley Warlava. Nay. Council Member Goodman. Aye. Council Member Johnson. Aye. Council Member Osman. Aye. Council Member Payne. Aye. Vice President Palmasano. Aye. President Jenkins. Aye. There are 10 ayes and three names. That item carries and um, we have one last item related to the policy oversight and governments governance um, committee and that is item number 26. Um, is there any discussion? Seeing none, I'll ask the clerk to call the roll. Council member Koski. Aye. Council Member Shaktai. Aye. Council Member Chavez. Aye. Council Member Ellison. 
Aye. Councilmember Vita. Aye. Councilmember Rainville. Aye. Councilmember Wansley Warlava. Aye. Councilmember Goodman. Aye. Councilmember Johnson. Aye. Councilmember Osman. Aye. Councilmember Payne. Aye. Vice President Palmasano. Aye. President Jenkins. Aye. There are 13 ayes. That item carries and uh, that report is adopted. Next, we have the Public Health and Safety Committee. That committee's report will be presented by its chair, Council Member Bita. Thank you, Madam President. The Public Health and Safety Committee has seven items that it will bring forth for consideration at this week's council meeting. Item number one is accepting a Minnesota Department of Health grant for COVID-19 vaccine hesitancy in the workplace. Item number two is accepting a National Forensic Science Improvement Grant for supplies for police department crime lab. Item number three is giving signatory authority on Centers for Disease Control and Prevention Public Health Associate Program host agreements with the Minneapolis Health Department. Items four through seven were moved forward without recommendation by the committee, but I will move uh, for their approval this morning. Item number four is authorizing a revenue contract with SMG to provide law enforcement equipment at U.S. Bank Stadium. Item number five is authorizing a revenue contract with SMG for SWAT security services at U.S. Bank Stadium. Item number six is authorizing revenue, authorizing a revenue contract with SMG for bomb detection services at U.S. Bank Stadium. And item number seven is authorizing a contract with the Downtown Improvement District for the Minneapolis Downtown Improvement District Summer Police and Police Reserve Program. With that, Madam President, I move items one through seven for approval. Thank you. Council Member Vitao has moved um, this report for approval. I see uh, Council Member Payne in queue for discussing this item. Thank you, Madam President. Yeah, I wanted to speak on items four through seven. Uh, there was a very robust conversation we had during committee. We had a really comprehensive presentation by um, staff from the police department to help uh, build a deeper understanding around the buyback program. And carrying on from our last agenda item uh, is this theme of what is the true cost of how we approach policing. And one of my issues with the buyback program is it obscures that cost of policing. It helps bring in outside dollars that, you know, move money around within the balance sheet to, you know, it, it basically obscures what the true cost of sending out the patrols that we need to the community to do the types of policing that we need to do. Uh, I am a strong advocate of empowering our police department to use their management authority to determine where they should be allocating their resources. And I fundamentally disagree with the idea that um, private dollars could have some sort of operational or tactical impact on how we deploy our resources. We should be putting patrols in hot spots as needed. We should be putting patrols in neighborhoods that need it. And we shouldn't allow um, outside organizations to really be guiding those, those resource allocations. And that's why I would like to pull out four through seven as a separate vote because I would like to vote no on those items. You can vote no on them without pulling them, council member. Okay, I'll do that. Madam President, I would only say as the clerk, if we're going to have multiple people voting no, it's always more helpful and an accurate record to pull things uh, such as that. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, it is that your request, Council Member Payne, to pull those items from the full report? Yeah, I'd like to pull them so that I can uh, vote no on those separately from the consent items. Thank you. Um, and noted. Council Member Wansley Warlava. Thank you, Madam President. Um, I also just want to echo many of the sentiments that Council Member Payne raised. You know, when um, I 
I also appreciate the presentation that MPD did about the buybacks uh, program to our uh, PHS committee. Um, but what was very clear is that yes, the costs of public uh, safety is very unclear right now when we support initiatives like this. Like for instance, where officers work on buyback contract, they wear city logos, they use city guns, they drive city cars, and the taxpayers carry the liability, but there is zero accountability to the public in terms of the functioning or discipline on, on that they should be be holding to while they're committing um, or, you know, serving out these jobs. So I'm not convinced that this is the best way we should be, uh, you know, addressing many of, of our public safety needs. Um, more specifically on item seven, I'm also not convinced that the DID initiative is reducing violent encounters with law enforcement, that is not criminalizing homelessness, and that is actually providing uh, needed ser social services uh, rather than just over policing black and brown people. Um, again, I think there's lots of confusion still about the role of this initiative, this program, um, not just for me, but for the public. Um, and I would like to work with my colleagues. I plan to work with my colleagues, especially in PHS, so we can further clarify, you know, differences between the buyback programs, but especially off-duty work. Um, so while I have concerns about the buyback program, I did learn that it has some standardized and somewhat transparent camera processes that is not extended to off-duty work. Um, and this is why I'm looking forward to at least bringing a presentation forward in collaboration with our PHS leaders um, on how we can extend a lot more transparency around off-duty programs as well. But I'll be voting no on these items too. Yeah, thank you, Councilmember uh, Wansley Warlebond. Thank you for noting the distinction between buyback uh, and off-duty work. Um, Council Member Goodman. Thank you, Madam President. I wasn't going to say anything, but I think that there's been a bit of misinformation out there, and so I just have two things to say. As it pertains to items four, five, and six, if the city wants to allocate a million dollars to help with the security at U.S. Bank Stadium, um, as a requirement that the Vikings and other concerts have to bring those events to Minneapolis, feel free to add it to the budget. For me, I'd rather have them pay for that level of security as required by the NFL and other big concerts and events that happen in that location. I, for one, am grateful that they're actually stepping forward to pay for something because I think bringing big events to the city and having professional sports, which I am no fan of, but having them in the city makes us a world-class city in many ways. It's not the only thing, but it is something that is important to a segment of the population. And we are required to have that level of security in order to host these events. And so I think the fact that our partners at the Sports Facilities Commission uh, paying for it makes a ton of sense. And if we want to budget for it and send them over to meet the requirement, feel free to bring forward a budget amendment. I'm particularly disturbed about this allegation that the downtown improvement district is simply over policing people. Um, maybe there needs to be a briefing in the public safety committee on what the DID is doing. We'll start with raising $6.5 million from the private sector to be clean, green, and safe. They've also included contracts with violence interruption and violence prevention organizations, and they even have a mental health their own mental health response unit. They've put hundreds of thousands of dollars into helping people who are unsheltered downtown store their belongings and have a place to go. The downtown council has been a leader on helping homeless people in the downtown area for at least the past five years. So this is a revenue contract with the DID to support part of their summer police and police reserve program that is very multifaceted, that does not only include police officers, but includes uh, ambassadors, as well as others who are working downtown in the area of mental health, violence interruption, and violence prevention to ensure that the downtown that almost every council member has constituents who use, whether it be work, live, or play, appreciate. This is something we should be thanking them for, not voting against. Thank you, Council Member Goodman. Council Member Rainville. Thank you, Madam Chair. I just want to remind our, our fellow uh, council, my fellow council members, that uh, if 
there is not this extra security at the stadium, the Department of Homeland Security will downgrade uh, that building and you will not see events in there, whether it's Viking games or concerts. It's paramount to approve this contract. And uh, I want to echo Councilmember Goodman's statements that uh, there, no one, uh, there are very few organizations that have done as much to help public safety than the downtown council, including in their efforts with those who are unsheltered and need social services. So uh, uh, what we do need to do is pass these today and get into co uh, committee meetings and understand exactly what the downtown council means to our efforts for public safety. They're a great partner and I appreciate them. Thank you, Councilmember Rainville. Councilmember Vita. Thank you, Madam President. Um, I just wanted to say that we had a really great presentation in committee from staff around the buyback. Uh, we've had a couple of votes already on the buyback and there's been lots of confusion. I thought staff did a really great job at uh, presenting to us the um, different versions of buyback. There's not one way. We use buyback in the city in many different ways. And I'm happy that we use buyback with uh, multi-billion dollar stadium owners, you know, these big sports arenas in the way that we do so that as taxpayers, we don't have to pay for additional security that's required by the NBA, by the NFL, you know, any of these uh, that's required by Beyonce. You know, if we have concerts here in Minneapolis, there are certain measures of security that we have to have and the buyback allows for that. Um, I really encourage my colleagues to uh, vote in favor of this today. I am more than happy to have additional presentations in the Public Health and Safety Committee around buyback if we need to. Um, I support the work of this and um, I, I hope that others will as well. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you so much, uh, Councilmember Vitao. And we will hear from Councilmember Payne. Thank you, Madam Chair. I just wanted to um, speak to the fact that within that presentation, it was, I, I, I made a very clear uh, question to MPD around, do they have the flexibility and the budget required to uh, turn on overtime in the, in the cases where they need to have extra folks on the ground. And they do in fact have the budget and they do in fact have the management flexibility to do that outside of these buyback programs. And so that was really important to me to hear that. And I just want to remind ourselves that we just had a fairly significant report of the aftermath of the murder of George Floyd just presented to this body two days ago. And one of the things that really jumped out at me during that report, uh, in that report was the fact that there are these systemic problems around our chain of command, around our policies and procedures. And there is a, a, a huge management problem that predated that event that made the, our response to that event fall apart. And I don't know that we've address those concerns yet. These are systemic concerns that I think that we really need to dig into and start addressing. And I don't think we should be uh, papering over that fact by throwing more money into the department without really having answers to some of those chain of command breakdowns that happened and predated the murder of George Floyd. And so I want this to be a moment for us to really think deeply about how we want to move forward and making sure that we have the right um, training and protocols in place and staffing in place to meet these needs. And I don't think that the outside dollars are helping us get there. Thank you, Council Member Payne. Um, seeing no further discussion, I will ask the clerk to call the roll. On one through three. the items one, two, and three of the public health and safety um, report. Thank you. Councilmember Koski. Aye. Councilmember Shuktai. Aye. Councilmember Chavez. Aye. Councilmember Ellison. Aye. Councilmember Vita. Aye. Councilmember Rainville. Aye. Councilmember Wansley Warlava. Aye. Councilmember Goodman. Aye. 
Council Member Johnson. Aye. Council Member Osman. Aye. Council Member Payne. Aye. Vice President Palmasano. Aye. President Jenkins. Aye. There are 13 ayes. That part of the report carries. And next we will um, take up items four through seven. Uh, is there any further discussion? I think we discussed this pretty um, pretty broadly and intensely. So I will just ask the clerk to call the roll. Council Member Koski. Aye. Council Member Shugtai. I Council all except seven. Council Member Chavez. No. Council Member Allison. Uh, I all except seven. Council Member Vita. Aye. Council Member Rainville. Aye. Council Member uh, Lonsley Warlaba. Nay. Councilmember Goodman. Aye. Councilmember Johnson. Aye. Councilmember Osman. Aye. Councilmember Payne. Nay. Vice President Palmasano. Aye. President Jenkins. Aye. There are 10 ayes on the report. There are three nays, and item number seven has a total of five nays. So that portion of the report carries and we will, um, and the report is adopted. And um, finally, we have the Public Works and Infrastructure Committee. And the report from that committee will be presented by the Vice Chair, Council Member Koski. Uh, thank you, Madam President. The Public Works and Infrastructure Committee is bringing 10 items forward for approval. The first is the 50, 58th Street East resurfacing for project approval and assessment. Uh, the second is the 60th Street West Sunrise Drive and 50th 8th Street West resurfacing for project and approval and assessment. The third is the Corcoran Residential Street resurfacing for project approval and assessment. The fourth is cooperative construction agreement uh, with the Metropolitan Council for reimbursement of uh, downtown bus lane projects. The fifth is the agency relocation agreement with the Minnesota Department of Transportation for Trunk Highway 77. The sixth is the agreement amendment with BIT NLG 3 Investors LLC for the Bassett Creek Tunnel. The seventh is the street lighting project at 1919 Nicollet Avenue South for project designation, cost estimate, and setting the public hearing. Uh, number eight is our 2022 Minneapolis Open Streets. Number nine is Morrissey's St. Patrick's Day Celebration uh, Large Block Event Permit. And number 10 is Americans with Disabilities Act Transition Plan for Public Works, and it's the 2022 update. With that, I move these 10 items for approval. Uh, Vice Chair uh, Kasky has moved the committee's report for approval, is there any discussion? Is there any discussion? Seeing none, I'll ask the clerk to call the roll. Council Member Koski. Aye. Council Member Shuktai. Aye. Council Member Chavez. Aye, but I did want to say something before I voted. I'm going to suggest we keep going with the roll call and that we come back for a comment. Council Member Ellison. Aye. Councilmember Vita. Aye. Councilmember Rainville. Aye. Councilmember Wansley Warlaba. Aye. Councilmember Goodman. Aye. Councilmember Johnson. Aye. Councilmember Osman. Aye. Councilmember Payne. Aye. Vice President Palmasano. Aye. President Jenkins. Aye. There are 13 ayes. That item carries and that report is adopted. My apologies, Councilmember Chavez, um, as I did not 
recognize your name in the queue, but. Oh, no, I take it in your comments. Thank you, Council President. I just want to say that I am supporting this and supporting number three, but I want to work with city staff and my constituents who some have raised concerns that they're struggling to pay the bill. So I just look forward to working with city staff uh, with some of my constituents on this. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, so that completes all of our committee reports and there are no reports from our special committees today. Um, there is um, the next order of business is notice of ordinance introductions. And as reflected on the agenda, Council Member Johnson gives notice of his intent to introduce at the next regular meeting of the full council the subject matter of an ordinance to amend the zoning code with revisions to five chapters that would amend regulations related to electric vehicle charging infrastructure in new development. Uh, this notice is hereby given and no further action is required at this time. The next order of business is our introduction and referral calendar. And there is one item on today's, um, on the calendar today, uh, a motion by Council Member Johnson pursuant to the notice at our last meeting to introduce an ordinance to amend Title 19 of the code to repeal, replace, and amend all chapters to revise stormwater sewer and sanitary sewer charges and permits for the laying, repairing, and replacing of stormwater sewer and sanitary sewer pipes for first reading and referral to the Public Works and Infrastructure Committee. Are there any questions on that referral? Are there any questions? Um, seeing none, um, may I have a motion to process that ordinance introduction and referral? So moved. Second. The clerk will, I will ask the clerk to call the roll. Councilmember Koski. Aye. Councilmember Shugtai. Aye. Councilmember Chavez. Aye. Councilmember Ellison. Aye. Councilmember Vita. Aye. Councilmember Rainville. Aye. Councilmember Wansley Warlava. Aye. Councilmember Goodman. Aye. Councilmember Johnson. Aye. Councilmember Osman. Aye. Councilmember Payne. Aye. Vice President Palmasano. Aye. President Jenkins. Aye. There are 13 ayes. That carries and the matter has been referred to the PWI committee for in the next uh, council cycle. Uh, the next order of business is resolutions and colleagues. Uh, there's one resolution before us today, which was presented at the beginning of today's meeting honoring Women's History Month. At this time, I'll ask if there are any final comments on that honorary resolution listed on the agenda. Seeing none, I will um, entertain a motion to adopt uh, this honorary resolution. So moved. Second. And Kirk, please call the roll. Council Member Koski. Aye. Council Member Shugtai. Aye. Council Member Chavez. Aye. Council Member Ellison. Aye. Council Member Vita. Aye. Council Member Rainville. Aye. Council Member Wansley Warlava. Aye. Council Member Goodman. Aye. Council Member Johnson. Aye. Council Member Osman. Aye. Council Member Payne. Aye. Vice President Palmasano. Aye. President Jenkins. Aye. There are 13 ayes. That item carries and that resolution is adopted. Colleagues, before we move to the next item, I do want to just note that um, for the past four council cycles, we have had a resolution honoring uh, National Multiple Sclerosis Awareness Month. Um, and this month, the MS Society 
um, determine that because the council has had so much on its plate that they would um, withhold um, that resolution um, for this year. But I did want to just speak to the realities of um, multiple sclerosis as I am um, a person uh, living with multiple sclerosis and there are nearly 1 million people in the United States with MS and the National MS Society makes sure that everyone has what they need to take back control from MS. To stand strong with every person with MS, we work to dismantle racism and combat discrimination in all its forms to remove barriers to equitable outcomes for marginalized communities. People connected to the MS Society report that they are better equipped to manage life with MS and the National MS Society is here for every person with MS. We will always be until we find a cure. We embrace and are committed to bringing our entire MS community together, representative of all the various dimensions of diversity so that everyone feels at home and supported by their National MS Society. M the National MS Society is here for every person with M MS in every community across the United States. Um, and there is a very um, active and robust chapter here in um, Minneapolis. And I just wanted to, to recognize them and the work that they are doing in honor of um, Multiple Sclerosis Awareness Week that will begin on uh, March 13th. And we will not be in session, so I wanted to bring that forward today. Um, with that, I will return to our agenda. Um, I'm sorry, I do want to acknowledge um, Council Member Ellison. Thank you, Council President. I was just going to sort of stand in solidarity with um, uh, uh, the what you were discussing as, as far as MS. You know, my mother was diagnosed when I was around 15. And so um, I know that I, while I don't experience what you all are going through, when I what I've been able to see her persevere through, what I've been able to see you persevere through has certainly been an inspiration to me. And so just wanted to, to offer that solidarity to you and, and, and to thank you for uh, for bringing that up. Thank you, Council Member Ellison. Uh, much appreciated. And um, next order of business is motions. Uh, Council Member Chavez is bringing forward a motion related to the Hiawatha Maintenance Facility campus expansion. And I will um, call on Council Member Chavez, but I see Council Member Johnson has uh, put himself in queue. So let's start with Council Member Johnson. Oh, Madam President, I defer to Council Member Chavez. I also see Council Member Palmasano in queue before me as well. Oh, I, I am so sorry. Um, Council Member Chavez, I missed these things in the chat. If you don't mind, I will call on Council Member Palmasano first. That's all right, okay? Madam Chair. It was, um, it was actually for the previous item. I do have something I'd like to say for this, but I also yield to Council Member Chavez. So just keep going. It's all good. Awesome. All right. Perfect. Yeah, Council President Jenkins and Council Members, I want to begin by saying that we are on Native land, traditionally the home of Native American tribes and the first people of this land. I want to thank you all for giving me and my community the opportunity to meet and discuss the future of the Roof Depot site here in the Ninth Ward. I want to acknowledge the work of city staff that has gone on to this project for years, as I know that it has not been easy at all, but also stating that the community I represent, it has been just as hard for them as well. People have lost hope in government, have felt left behind and uncared for. Why is it that when we always ask communities of color, we ask them how and why? We have an opportunity today to bring back happiness, bring back joy and bring back so much hope to a lot of people and in their lives. After multiple conversations with many of you, I made changes to our original motion. Part one relates to the former action that the Minneapolis City Council took in the fall that would remove the training facility out of this plan, would set aside three acres for community and would move forward with the expansion. I am rescinding that motion today so we can bring back that training center to, that, to this project and move forward with the vision that we can all work closely together on. 
This is something that is overwhelmingly supported by a lot of you on this body and the people that I represent, especially in the Phillips neighborhoods. My hope for this motion is to work with the East Phillips Neighborhood Institute, the Public Works Department, unions, members of this body, and my community on ways that we can move forward with a proposal to be submitted by June 30th, 2022. Part two, prevents the demolition and construction of city owned parcels, which are the seven acres that my community deserves a shot at. And then part three, the last part of the motion. I had a lot of conversations with members of this body about repayment. I know that the community has committed to fundraise those efforts, and I changed that language to make sure that it can reflect that. It now says it will help identify options instead of a binding that would require. This is language that was required by the city attorney's office and cannot include Ebony at this moment because they do not have exclusive development rights. So I want to make that very clear. I know that a lot of conversations have occurred in the past few days, discussions about a training center. The council took the training center out in the fall. Our community needs to bring that back, and that's part of these efforts. There are questions about remediation. Remediation is about the three acres of the land, not the seven acres that the community deserves a shot at. I know there are concerns about the location for city staff and I share those same concerns. And please know that I will do everything that I can to make sure that our workers are here in a safe place and are committed to finding that location with them. But I wanna be very clear. This project has been shoved down the throats of my constituents. They have not been given a shot to prove themselves. Cassie Holmes, a Little Earth resident who lost her teenage son to a heart condition that is known to be accelerated by pollution, has been a part of this process. People in my ward have been asked if they want clean air or clean water, that their zip code will determine who gets to live and who gets to die. I want to be very clear. East Phillips should not be a municipal sacrificial zone, nor should it be an exception for a dumping ground for pollution. I represent Little Earth in the Ninth Ward. They call the Hiawatha Campus Expansion Project a genocide of Native people to the 38 different tribes that are represented. I hope you all give me a shot to work with me and my community to address the inequities impacting us today. And this may not be enough to convince some of you to vote for my motion today, but I want to ask you all to give me a shot and to give my community a shot. I was born and raised in East Phillips in this neighborhood, three blocks away from where this project is being proposed. This is my home. This is the place that helped me become who I am, and it's the place that will always fight for. I'm never going to give up for this community. I am the kid from the East Phillips neighborhood. I'm the kid whose parents cannot have access to health insurance and do not get the medical care that they deserve from the pollution that was shoved onto their bodies. I am the kid that played on contaminated soil and ate fruits and ate fruits from my backyard filled with arsenic. I ran for office to address the inequities plaguing my community here in the Ninth Ward. This is not a game to me. This is not politics to me. It is personal because what I live through is what my community continues to live through every single day here in the East Phillips neighborhood. I hope that all of you find it in your hearts to work with me if we move forward with this today. I want to give an extra thanks to Councilmember Johnson, Councilmember Koski for their help throughout this process. And I want to thank every single council member that gave my community a shot. Know that we are in this to fight for a better life and we have been in constant communication to make sure that we can do things better for my community, the community that I represent, the community I was born and raised in. I believe that this action is a golden opportunity to change the details of this site. This site years ago should have never been a place for this project to be built, and it's why many people in my community continue to fight for a different vision today. We can either be a city that turns their backs on the years of cries, or we can do something different on this site built on a green zone. We can be the city that addresses and meets the needs of community making decisions, and we can work in good faith with community members, our public works department, our unions, all our council members, and the mayor to make sure that we can come up with a compromise that benefits the community members that I represent. I want to be very, very clear. My community deserves a shot, and I'm asking all of you to give me my shot to prove to you that my community is worth fighting for. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Council Member Chavez, and um, I will next uh, give the floor to Council Member Johnson. Thank you, Madam President. I will actually defer to Council Member Palmasano, who was in queue before me, and I believe I've heard might be making a motion, and so I'd, I'd be interested in that and understanding that first before speaking. Thank you. Uh, Council Member Palmasano. Thank you. Um, 
I have had the opportunity uh, to meet with Council Member Chavez and others. Um, it, you know, this is a pretty complex thing. And as I worked with, spoke with Council Member Chavez in this office uh, last week, I, I tried to appreciate where he was at and also understand that we can't go back and re take take votes from the past that um, we just didn't like the outcome of before. I was on the losing side of this vote in the past, um, but we really need to move on or we haven't done, um, we aren't moving forward as a city and we are incurring great and increased cost as we move forward with this project. So I really do appreciate where this has come since that time, since that conversation. Um, but I do, so, so I do think we've made progress here. This is a fundamentally different motion. Um, there's been so much discussion and competing potential substitute motions here. I just think we could have a much better motion in two weeks time, one that we would involve the public works department in. Um, I'd like to make sure that staff are included in a measure such as this. Um, for example, a difficulty that I have with Council Member Chavez's motion is the word rescind in the first part of the motion. We need to make sure that if we're not, we're not um, successful by June 30th, that we don't go back to square one, that we go back to the prior motion that Council Member Ellison brought last fall. Um, staff has said very clearly that they otherwise would need to cut programs or do a massive property increase for this specific project. And I think that the author deserves and the community needs a better answer than that. I think we could be working together to provide better language. Um, I would like to propose a, a singular comeback in two weeks time at our next meeting with some kind of language that everybody um, could agree on and with clarity. Um, you know, I, I think there's a tremendous lack of clarity about what the intent is to fill the $14 million hole in our budget. There's a lack of clarity about rescinding the previous action without having an alternative. Um, I just think that we could all benefit and be more comfortable in our positions, whatever they are, if for a two week delay. So I would like to propose a short one cycle delay so that we can all have conversations um, at a normal speed instead of a flurry of last minute phone calls. I did send that motion to the clerks. Um, it's just a basic motion to encourage a one cycle delay to this project. Thank you, Council Member Palmasano. And so we now have a um, alternative motion or a substitute motion, I believe, um, in front of us. Is there any discussion on the substitute um, Palmasano motion? Council Member Johnson. Thank you, Madam President. Um, I do not support a delay on this. Uh, first, I want to just clarify for the record uh, something the previous speaker said is that we can't go back and take votes on things that have already happened. That is factually incorrect. That might be uh, her opinion. Uh, but in fact, we do have a new majority of council members. The previous decision that was made on this uh, item happened immediately before an election in which we saw the voters change uh, a number of seats. And so at that time, I remember talking with colleagues and suggesting we hold off on making that decision uh, late last fall uh, because of the election, because we would have a number of new council members, including a new council member for Ward 9, uh, and that such a big vote shouldn't be taken immediately before the election on a controversial topic. Now, uh, that vote still proceeded, but I certainly do think it is appropriate for the council to consider uh, this matter, uh, especially looking back at that vote, that both it was a 6-7 uh, or 7-6 rather decision and as well that I think uh, probably one of the key elements that uh, council members and community members wanted a training center was not 
I included as a result kind of of last minute motions around this. I also disagree with uh, the notion that, uh, you know, somehow this is a last minute thing. This has been something that I know council member Chavez has talked with every single uh, council member before being elected uh, as we got to know one another. Uh, and it's something that has been out noticed on our last agenda from two weeks ago. There have been conversations with public week, uh, works leadership uh, before that uh, even. And so there's been extensive conversation and it's only in mm, maybe the last uh, 18 hours or, or even less than that, that I've suddenly heard this notion of a delay coming forward at the at the last minute. And so, uh, you know, I really question why we would do that when it doesn't ultimately affect the fundamental question at play here, which is whether or not this community should have an opportunity to do their due diligence over the Roof Depot building and their vision ultimately uh, that they have brought forward around utilizing and repurposing that building for an urban farm. They have never in the last eight years had that opportunity because the council has always rammed through uh, the plan for public works. Now, I also have to say this is a needed uh, uh, facility, a water yard facility for public works. It absolutely is, as is the training center. There are also multiple other sites uh, that would be suitable for uh, both the water yard and for the training center as well. We are not asking though to uh, rule out the water yard or the training center at this site. In fact, council member Chavez's motion, which by the way, big credit to council member Koski for really bringing forward uh, this compromise motion um, or, or the changes, the amendments to this, the, the beauty of the motion is that it actually allows in parallel uh, public works because it does not actually pause planning. It just says demolition or construction on the site itself. It does not pause planning uh, efforts for public works to continue working in parallel. Uh, it does not uh, rule out uh, public works in the future from having either the water yard or the training facility or the stores building on that site. But what it does do is in importantly rescinding that previous action. It opens up the door for the community to really have the opportunity to do their due diligence. I'd like to speak for the community uh, to the community for a moment on this because I expect today most likely that the council will approve council member Chavez's motion. I hope that the council does do that. And that will give the community until June 30th to put together a detailed comprehensive plan with realistic financial projections, business planning, and a plan to pay back as much as possible of the money from the water yard, uh, even if it is not the full 14 million, which frankly, I think the city at the end of the day should have some skin in the game on this as well. Uh, but that said, that's what we need by June 30th from the community. I believe in the community. I believe that the community can pull that together. But if that does not happen, all options are on the table for public works as far as I'm concerned uh, with this site, including option A, which would uh, have the training facility and uh, the stores facility uh, as part of this project. And so, you know, we this this it is an important moment for the community. I believe in the community. I believe the community should have this opportunity for the first time on this site. And I also know that uh, if this plan cannot materialize, if there is not a viable path forward for this incredible vision from the community, that we really do need to, at that point, uh, move forward with a public works facility. So that would be my encouragement to the community is really to focus on uh, on getting a comprehensive viable plan together. I will also uh, just wanted to express a lot of gratitude to uh, Council Member Chavez for all of his leadership on this. And again, to the community for continually standing up and advocating here, uh, rather than being told what's gonna happen to them, which seems to be the case over and over again, really standing up and saying uh, that they have a dream for this site and pursuing that dream. So. I would ask my colleagues, please 
uh, vote down this uh, motion to delay. I don't think it actually changes anything about the fundamentals here, which is really should the community have this opportunity around due diligence. There is not uh, any sort of uh, new information we're working with here. This motion has been effectively out for the last two weeks in the uh, amendments today based off of feedback that council member Chavez heard from you are just adding some additional clarity. It doesn't ultimately change what has been in front of us for uh, two weeks and has not changed the conversation that has been going on much longer than that for many of you for months, for some of us, eight plus years. So please stand with the community in this important moment and give them this opportunity, give them this shot today. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Johnson and um, Councilmember uh, Wansley Warlaba is next in queue. And I do just want to note, Councilmember, um, I wasn't intentionally trying to overlook you, but as you know, our colleagues sort of traded spaces and et cetera, et cetera. So now is your turn. Thank you so much for that clarification, uh, Madam President. I just want to take a moment and just extend the utmost gratitude to Council Member Chavez um, for bringing this motion forward. Thank you to Council Member Johnson um, and also Koski for acknowledging that this project comes um, and is led by a diverse community uh, for more than eight years who have been told no to a vision that actually addresses the harms of uh, racist environmental policies um, and actions that has led to um, disproportionate impacts on that community for decades now. So I just want to thank you for your uh, willingness to be uh, collaborative with each other and bringing this forward um, before us. I also have to acknowledge that it's very disappointing and disheartening to hear our own council president um, say that we should move on. And let me tell you, for a community that is largely black and brown and indigenous, and as a black woman myself, it's hard to move on when you can't breathe. It's hard to move on when you're, you don't have the ability to step outside and breathe in clean air without possibly getting cancer or watching your kids get asthma. Those same realities that apply, I also know this in East Phillips, it's also extended to um, our residents in North Minneapolis. So we cannot and should not just be simply telling communities that have faced the brunt of racist environmental uh, uh, actions uh, and measures in our city to move on. They are moving on and their efforts of moving on has led to us having the opportunity to pass a motion that pauses demolition on a site um, that can also further exaggerate existing uh, environmental harms, but most importantly, it allows us to set a new president, um, not only for our city, not only for that community, but for the country of what it looks like to actually lead with the Green New Deal. Um, I also want to highlight some of the comments that were was raised. Um, I know I've been contacted by staff. I know I heard this even in some of the comments from Vice uh, President uh, Palmasano about this choice between a water facility um, and how that relates to a motion uh, to delay. I want to note that that is an absolutely false choice. We do not have to choose between a water facility and poisoning black and brown uh, neighbors in one of our most uh, diverse uh, neighborhoods in the city. That is absolutely a false choice. Um, this is also coming in the wake and thanks to the work of Council President Jenkins for um, leading on this. In 2020, we declared that racism was a public health crisis and emergency. So we can't simply just take the, uh, the state facts, state value statements, and ask for more time um, for communities that have been struggling, that have been uh, basically dying, basically being harmed, withstanding oppression at the hills of the city for a number of years now. We simply can't just say, let's have more time for this. We actually need to act and take initiative, and we have the opportunity to do that right now. We have the opportunity to engage in real reparative justice through supporting this project. Um, and we have the opportunity to take ownership. This is not a statewide issue. This is not, we can't deflect to another like a uh, private business. This is actually an opportunity in which the city can lead. Nobody can solve this issue of environmental uh, uh, racism and pollution 
um, nor no one else can solve for us how we can better address climate inequities. This is the opportunity for the city to do it. And the community has been patiently trying to work with us for more than eight years to do that. So let's work together and move this forward. Instead of demolition, we need to be moving forward with supporting the East Fellows Farm Project. Um, I've received hundreds of contacts just in my office from constituents urging me to support giving uh, both exclusive development rights to uh, East Phillips uh, uh, East Phillips Neighborhood Institute, um, as well as pausing this demolition so the community can do what they need to do to further present a plan because black and brown people are always being asked to present a plan. They wanna present that plan to us. Um, they just need the time to be able to do that and by pausing, suspending whatever the language we're uh, hearing today from Council Member Chavez, we should be doing that. I also want to give a uh, Credit to another constituency in my ward that also encouraged me to support this today, the Twin Cities Medical Society. I want to emphasize that. A society of medical doctors reached out to every single one of us from the University of Minnesota, urging us to support this effort in addressing public health harms and inequities for them as physicians, so they don't have to treat our own residents for asthma, for uh, cancer, for other, other, you know, health issues. So let's actually do that. Let's actually take a bold stance and support our black and brown communities in their needs, in their vision. So let's not just simply move on, let's act and act side by side with a community that has faced so much harm and we don't have to compound that by delaying a vote and pursuing demolition of a building that they have a beautiful and community driven vision for. Thank you, Council Member Wansley Warlaba. And I'm really glad I put myself in queue um, earlier, uh, not knowing that I would be um, named as trying to um, delay this project. Um, that is not my intention at all. I think maybe you were misspeaking when you attributed those comments to the council president, but all of that being said, um, I do want to appreciate, um, council member Chavez as well as, um, council members Johnson and Koski for bringing forward this, um, this motion today, um, it it really does help us to 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 try to move forward um, as a city and address the the goals and commitments that we have said um, are at play. We have determined that this is a green zone. Um, we unanimously declared racism as a public health crisis. Um, as well as we um, brought forth um, and unanimously supported um, the creation of a truth and reconciliation work group, which I see this action, um, this potential action as, as a part of that reckoning, that reconciliation, that, um, that recompense for the harms that have been uh, done to, to this community, this specific community, but to black and brown communities all throughout uh, the city. Um, you know, myself and, and many of my other colleagues last week attended uh, an event hosted by Meet Minneapolis, and we were um, all provided a book called Di Disrupted Yourself. And we have to disrupt things if we are going to really be serious about addressing climate change, if we are going to be um, um, concerned in addressing environmental injustices, if we are going to live up to our commitments as racism, as a public health crisis. Um, those aren't just statements. Um, those are, we have to provide some um, concrete actions 
as it is related to those um, ideas. And, and unfortunately, this won't be the last action that we'll have to take. I also want to just note that, you know, one of the reasons why I really brought this entire conversation back um, in 2020 is because the entire planet was uh, infected by a, um, a lung disease that we are calling the coronavirus. And it has had several uh, variants related to it um, since it was introduced on the planet. The coronavirus and its variants impacts people's abilities to breathe. We saw in the pandemic that the, the people who were most deeply and uh, traumatically impacted by this virus were black and brown communities, people of color, um, Native communities, communities that were already um, predisposed to uh, chronic illnesses, um, as well as deadly illnesses before the pandemic hit. And so we have to get serious about um, mitigating, reducing, um, and ending those harms. In addition, we are in a climate crisis. We have to, con we as a society, as a city, as a community, begin to address it. We can't wait 30 years. We can't even wait two weeks. We have to do it now. And so that is, um, my intention today, and um, I will, um, I see next in queue um, is Council Member Koski. Oh, I think that Council Member Payne was ahead of me, but it kind of maybe got lost in there. So, uh, thank you, Madam President. I, I took myself out of queue because you spoke really directly to what I wanted to say around uh, declaring a, uh, racism as a public health emergency feels good. Recognizing green songs feels good. Um, that translates to us needing to take some really confident actions to recognize those those value statements. And I think that council member um, Chavez has given plenty of clarity, plenty of moral clarity around how we should be moving forward. Um, and I'd actually even recommend we take a roll call on this delay because I think that um, we should not be delaying. And I think the votes are there to not delay uh, and push this out another two weeks. We need to take up Council Member Chavez's motion. So are you calling the question on the yeah. substitute motion, Council Member Payne? Yes, I'm calling the question. Um, Mr. Clerk, is there any discussion on calling the question? I don't think there is. Madam President, we didn't receive a second on a substitute motion offered by Council Member Palmasano. So uh, unless there's a second, there's no need to go further. I'll second it. We now have a proper second um, to that motion. And we have a call for the question. Is there any discussion allowed uh, beyond that? Um, we will, I will ask the clerk to call the roll on the substitute motion by Council Member Palmasano. Council Member Koski. Nay. Council Member Shugtai. Nay. Council Member Chavez. Nay. Council Member Allison. Nay. Council Member Vita. Aye. Council Member Rainville. Aye. Council Member Wansley Warlaba. Nay. Council Member Goodman. Aye. Council Member Johnson. Nay. Council Member Osman. Aye. Council Member Payne. Nay. Vice President Palmasano. Aye. 
President Jenkins. Nay. There are five ayes and eight nays. Uh, that item fails. And we are back to the original motion by Council Member Chavez. I do see Council Members Chuck, well, Pomisano, Chuck Ty, Ellison, and Wansley Warlaba. Uh, Madam, yes. Madam President, if I just could interrupt really quick, I think we start that uh, call at Council Member Koski, who uh, was not called last time Council Member Payne uh, called the question. And so I think if we start with Council Member Koski, she's first, and then Pomisano and Chuck Ty. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. Council Member Koski. Uh, thank you, Madam President. Uh, so in preparation for today's vote on Council Member Jason Chavez's motion, I have visited the site, I attended community meetings, and on multiple occasions I met with council members, public works, and community stakeholders. In all of these conversations I had regarding the Hiawatha Maintenance Facility Campus expansion uh, with partners both in support and opposed to the project layout as is, Every partner expressed interest in a training center being included in the plan moving forward. But the project layout as it does uh, not include it as is now, it does not include a training center. Uh, the training center is a shared goal of common ground and a training center would be a valuable addition for both the city and the community. We need to take time to revisit how a training center can be part of the project layout and we need to give public works and the community a chance to work together towards a shared goal. This gives the community an opportunity to revisit this item and come back to the table with multiple options. And what I will be looking for at the end of this pause is formal proposals, proposals that are inclusive of both finance and development plans. At the end of this pause, I believe we'll be able to make an informed decision and proceed with a clear path forward. It's my hope and goal that we will all come to the table and work with the East Phillips community to support one of the most diverse and disenfranchised communities in the city of Minneapolis. Extensive work was done to prepare a motion on this matter, a motion that includes a structure, timeline, and a formal ask to the stakeholders involved and an opportunity for the community. It's time for us not to reopen an old conversation, but to have a new conversation. And that is why I'm going to support this motion. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Koski. Um, I, and I do apologize to, to everyone. I'm getting a little uh, mixed up on the queue here, but I think Council Member Pomisano is next in queue. Thank you, Madam Chair. I think we need to work together to do this. Um, and I appreciate the words of my colleagues here today, particularly what Council Member Koski just said, and let's not be vague in what we're asking for by June 30th. Let's add in the kinds of metrics and specifics around fundraising goals that we would need um, for this project. I think that um, you know, this draft, my understanding was last finalized after 6 p.m. last night. So I think it's a little bit disingenuous to suggest that we've had this all in hand for two weeks. Um, we all agree that we want a training facility. Um, I don't think it's fair for us to put the need to design a training facility on community stakeholders. I think they have enough going on with trying to raise money for such um, a project. I think it's on all of us um, and I would like that um, acknowledged. Um, mostly, I would like to suggest a friendly amendment to my colleague, Council Member Chavez, and it is the word rescind in item number one. I'd like to, it to instead suggest that it say suspend council action because if we work to, if, if this motion goes through as is, and it is rescinded. That means that if this does not happen, if we don't get the right kinds of formal proposals by June 30th, that then we will be back to square one instead of back to Council Member Ellison's um, winning proposal from last fall, I believe. So 
I think that if this does not happen by June 30th, we want to be back to where we were at as of today or yesterday and not go back to the beginning. And I'd like to know if he would be willing to do that change. Thank you. Can the city clerk explain what that would do? Uh, <clears throat> Madam President, the uh, proposed amendment to strike the word rescind and the first uh, resolving clause here of this motion uh, and to replace that with the word suspend would simply uh, postpone any further action on the approved site plan development that was authorized under that Council Action 2021A-0817. So pending the return of a development plan with community stakeholders, which was the new language underscored by June 30th, if that doesn't happen, then the prior action, Council Action 2021A-0817, would um, uh, be put back into place. So rather than rescinding and eliminating the prior action, it is merely a suspension to give space and time for uh, the development of a potential development for the property in partnership with community stakeholders to be submitted by June 30th. And before I uh, close off my mic, I'll say we also would need a second uh, for the amendment offered by Council Member Vice President Palmasano. I would say that I do not want to accept this uh, friendly amendment. I want to continue with my language. And I do see in the chat that the council president wants to take a little break. So I want to make sure that when we vote that all council members are present. I have a word well, there, are there, are still, there are still people in queue to speak. Oh, perfect. And Council Vice I President, I'm ask so Council Vice President to, to please chair while I take a bio break. Yep, I'm going to go ahead and do that with the acknowledgement from Council Member Chavez that he doesn't see that as friendly. I'll finish up my own time in queue by saying this is what I hear is I've had conversations all of yesterday with many of my colleagues that they do not think that this motion should put us back at square one, should put us back at the beginning where we were um, many years ago. Rather, they see this as one additional opportunity to work in partnership with community stakeholders. So I think there's a big disagreement on that. Um, I don't have a second for this motion, so I will move into my role of chairing the meeting and wait for that second motion from somebody, but work through the queue, starting with Council I'll, Member I'll Chuck. Second. second. Oh, thank you. It's been seconded. Council Member Chuck Dye. Are we are so now that your amendment's been seconded, the, the it sounded like Council Member Chavez didn't accept that as a friendly amendment. What exactly are we speaking to right now? Procedurally. I'll ask the clerk to verify this. Uh, Chair has recognized Council Member Shugtai for her comments. She was in queue uh, unless the chair wishes to move forward to a vote on the uh, amendment changing out the word rescind to suspend. Uh, I did hear Council Member Chavez ask to be sure that the council president was back. So we had a full slate of, of council members. So I leave to the discretion of the chair whether we proceed with the uh, queue of speakers as is uh, already in place. Uh, and then come back to the vote on the amendment before us now. I think maybe setting aside the amendment for now is the best practice. Yep, thank you. So Council Member Chugtai. Yeah, you know, I, I think I wanted to speak to just a couple of things that I've heard uh, so far today. One of them being about um, one of them being about the the role of community stakeholders in exploring the different options um, for for a formal proposal to be submitted uh, to us um, by June thirtieth. And I, and I actually I have I can't remember like a lot of people have um, spoken to this today. 
um, exactly where where or when I heard this, just about you know community members, uh, you know we shouldn't put it on them to come up with a proposal for us. Um, and I think that maybe like we're failing to hear what Council Member Chavez is trying to say. We're failing to hear what residents of East Phillips are telling us. They are telling us loudly, clearly, consistently that they actually want to be a part of the of the process in creating a formal proposal in having some ownership about what happens in their communities and not having the city tell them what you know what the future of this site should look like and so you know i just want to come back to we should center this conversation in what we're hearing from the people who are the most directly impacted and then from the from the uh the council member who who represents that community and has has taken a, a really active role from what i can see in, in engaging with that community I'll say, you know, I, um, I I wasn't raised in in East Phillips, uh, but the but I had a chance to engage with so many of um, the residents who live in East Phillips and so many of the residents at Little Earth talk about um, the future of uh, of this site and the thing that I have held on to throughout that entire time um, was a fact that was named to me. In, in one of the first conversations I had about this, right? It's that the average income um, at Little Earth uh, of, of the average annual income of, of a household is, is $12,000. Um, and that sticks with me because um, though I didn't grow up in this community, um, I was raised in a, a poor immigrant family from like from for the entire time that my mom has lived in this country, she has made twelve thousand dollars or less, and she continues to to this day a year. And so I see, you know, my family and my family's experiences reflected in the experiences that East Phillips residents are talking about. And you know, I can't turn away from that. I can't turn my back on that. And so I'm really proud uh, today to, you know, stand with the residents um, of East Phillips and to. Uh, move forward with this motion. I'm excited to support this. I'm uh, and, and really thankful to Council Member Chavez, to Council Member Kosky, and to Council Member Johnson for their work on pulling together a motion that um, really balances all of the stakeholders um, and prioritizes the community and what the community actually wants. And and so, you know, I, I'm just excited that this is something that we are taking seriously as a council, you know, allowing um, autonomy and agency to communities that are marginalized to take ownership of their destiny and their futures. So with that, um, I'll hand it back to, it looks like Council President Jenkins is back. I'll hand it back to her. So as Chair, I'll hand it back over to Council President Jenkins. And since you are back, Madam Chair, I'd ask that you, we, we go ahead and call the vote on my amendment to the Chavez motion. All right, thank you, um, Council Vice President. And um, um, I was in queue to discuss that. Can we get um, a second on that motion? Yes, Madam we did, President, Madam. we did. All right, so discussion. And I believe that so have we heard from council members ellison and wansley warlaba and chavez no madam president the next in queue according to the line is council member ellison yes council member ellison uh <clears throat> thank you council president uh, I am here to speak to the main motion so I I, I can hold my comments or I can make them now, um, but uh, but yeah, I was I was going to speak to the main motion. Madam President, perhaps the easiest way is if we're voting on Councilmember Palmasano's proposed amendment is to clear the queue, uh, scroll to the bottom, ask folks to put their name in if they're speaking to, and I'll ask the clerks to uh, put a header in that says Palmasano amendment so that we know clearly who's in queue to speak about what, and we just restart the queue. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Clark, and I do think that's uh, uh, a very um, a reasonable solution. And so um, we do have a, a proper motion and second in front of us. 
And I will allow discussion on that, but I'm just going to ask if everybody can put themselves back in queue to discuss the motion. And, and so I believe we have Council Member Chavez. Council Member Johnson is first. Uh, if we scroll all the way down, it'll say Palmasano Amendment from Jackie Hansen, and then they're they're inserting their names under there. Got it, got it, got it. Council Member Johnson. Thank you, Madam President. I agree with Council Member Chavez on, I think we should leave the language as rescind in this. This is the legislative uh, function in terms of clearing the slate so that the community can explore options uh, for potential development of this property and bring forward their formal proposals. I'll note that the council is going to have to act anyways because of uh, once those proposals are in there needs to be some sort of action. And actually by rescinding, it opens up other options uh, such as I mentioned around the training uh, facility, around the stores, and so it really puts all options uh, in play and there would have to be a vote anyways. And so I think it's cleanest, it makes the most sense to just do rescind at this point um, because it again provides the most options and we're going to have to take action anyways. Thank you. And, and just to be clear, Madam President, I'll, I'll just say uh, that means I, I don't support Councilmember Palmasano's amendment, so I'll be voting no on that. Thank you. Thank you. And then next in queue is Councilmember Wansley Wallaba. Thank you, Madam President. Um, I just wanted to first, for public record, share my apologies for sharing that you have made the comment about moving on. I just want to, yeah, um, definitely my comments were, you know, referring back to the statements made by Council Vice President Palmasano, not you. Um, second, in supporting, um, you know, the sentiments of Council Member Johnson, I would like to make a motion for us to vote um, on Palmasano's uh, amendment. Um, and, and just for us to take the vote. So Council Member Vita is um, calling the question. Wansley Council Warlaba. Member Wansley Warlaba made that I'm suggestion. <laughs> And um, there are still three council members in queue. If council member Wansley Warlaba wishes to make a motion to close debate and move to a vote and cut off those speakers who are in queue, we'll need a second and we'll need a vote. Second. Thank you. My apologies, council member Vito. And we now have a um, uh, motion to call the question. Um, and so I will ask the clerk to call the roll. Council Member Koski. Wait, I'm sorry, can we just get clarity on what we're voting on? a motion on? pending in front of the body to close debate and move immediately to a vote on the pending amendment from Council Member Palmasano to strike the word rescind and replace it with suspend. And this would require a two thirds majority vote to pass. Nay. Council Member Shugtai. Nay. Council Member Chavez. Council Member Ellison. Mr. Clerk, I'm sorry to create another mess. I, I do think council members are confused on what we're voting on. Um, and if you wouldn't mind, could I try explaining to my colleagues? So we're not on the motion yet. We are not on Palmas and correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Clerk, but we are not on um, Council Member Palmasano's motion yet. We are currently voting on whether or not to call the question. Correct? We're voting on whether to close debate. Yep. Okay. Um, and that, and so we're technically on Council Member Wansley Warlova's um, motion to call the question. Correct. And I will vote aye on, on that. I'm going to restart the roll so call. So can, we, yeah, can we? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Council Member Koski. Nay. 
Nay. Councilmember Shugtai. Aye. Councilmember Chavez. Aye. Councilmember Ellison. Aye. Councilmember Vita. Aye. Councilmember Rainville. Nay. Councilmember Wansley Warlaba. Aye. Councilmember Goodman. No. Councilmember Johnson. Aye. Councilmember Osman. Aye. Councilmember Payne. Aye. Vice President Palmasano. No. President Jenkins. Aye. There are nine ayes and four nays. Let's just move on. So now, um, council members, colleagues, we have in front of us um, the motion by uh, council motion member. by council member Palmasano to change out the word rescind to um, I'm sorry, what's the new language? Suspend. So it would simply strike the first word in the motion from rescind to suspend. All right. Is there any um, further discussion on the motion by Council Member Palmasano? We just uh, moved to call the question, so there is no discussion allowed. All right. All right. Clerk, please call the roll. Council Member Koski. Hey. Council Member Shugtai. Nay. Council Member Chavez. Nay. Council Member Ellison. Nay. Council Member Vita. Aye. Council Member Rainville. Aye. Council Member Wansley Warlaba. Nay. Council Member Goodman. Aye. Council Member Johnson. Nay. Council Member Osman. Aye. Council Member Payne. Nay. Vice President Palmasano. Aye. President Jenkins. Nay. There are five ayes and eight nays. That motion fails. And I believe we are back to the original motion now. Madam President, before anyone moves any further, I'm going to type into the queue original motion and ask that council members please sign up to speak after that. You are correct. We are back to the original motion. It's on your screens. It was on the agenda. Uh, this is the motion pending uh, before the body right now. It is the motion brought by council member Chavez. Uh, please refer to your screen if you want to see the most current and active uh, version of that that is before us. Um, and so I have entered into the queue original motion as a place to restart the queue for those who wish to speak on the original motion. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. And I see Council Member Osmond in queue. I uh, thank you, Madam President. I think that I will echo Council Member Koski and Council Member Palmasano and others to really come together on this issue. Um, I've been here a little longer than Councilmember Chavez, not that much, but this has been going on for, for many years and having the site uh, stay empty and um, not really put anything that can benefit our community move forward, uh, having an empty and, and, and uh, creating uh, a problem itself the way it is right now as the last um, important presentation we received from the staff that um, if it stays the way it is, then it's not really going to bring any 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 benefit. So I will. We tried, I, I believe Council Member Palmasana tried to uh, figure out a way at least to give us a couple of weeks to come together to work together. Um, we had this conversation. I don't know about a few months ago before the new council members came in and we all remember how the votes end up uh, six, seven. Um, the popular thing that uh, anyone, anyone want to see is uh, what is the benefit in the community moving forward in this? And let's be realistic. How possible will this be? Uh, it sounds like we're going in circles when it comes to 
making a decision on this. And however the votes end up today, uh, I feel like we're, we're square one again uh, in June 30th. Um, I am uh, really looking forward uh, supporting the community and making sure uh, what's benefiting the community and training center. It's something that definitely benefit many minority communities that live in the area. Um, it's a jobs that are new to this community. Uh, it's a jobs that uh, usually held by uh, different demographic than, than the, the community that live here. A training center is ideal job creation for the youth for this uh, for this future. So either uh, whatever decision we make today or, or June 30th, at the end, I would like to see a training center. However, we moved. I'd like to see a training center um, for for the benefit of uh, of our um, uh, youth in the future. Um, thank you so much. Thank you, Councilmember Osman. Uh, Councilmember Ellison. Um, thank you, Council President. I uh, just wanted to put myself in queue because I I, uh, I was supportive of the direction, um, the current direction, uh, not the one that's before us now, um, last term, but I've always uh, been trying to find a way to be supportive of the, uh, of, of East Phillips, of the council member of the ward. And I think that what I found last term was a strong inconsistency from not from the community, but from the representation of the ward on how we were going to go about this, what we were going to do. Uh, and I think that a lot of my decision making then was based on what I felt was uh, a strong lack of due diligence. And I just want to commend Council Member Chavez for uh, being incredibly consistent um, since day one, getting an office uh, also on the campaign trail um, and, and not only uh, stating what he wants to see happen, not only advocating for his community uh, and, and what they want to see happen, uh, but doing the the really unsexy grunt work to make it possible here on the council side. Uh, I've seen the community show up for this project and fight hard for this project, and I haven't always seen that energy returned um, uh, uh, from, um, from Ward 9, but I think we're now at an opportunity where we have a Ward 9 representative who not only has a vision of what the community wants to see, but also has a vision of how to make it happen procedurally um, and technically here on the council side of things. And so um, that's going a long way with me in feeling uh, in increasing my confidence that this is a possible pathway now. Um, and uh, I'm excited to work with Council Member Chavez and uh, and support his leadership in, in seeing this come to fruition. I'm still going to be a stickler for due diligence as we head in this direction. I'm still going to, uh, uh, you know, want to see some due process. I'm going to want to see uh, a little bit of uh, good faith shown on the part of the community, on the part of the council. Uh, I'm going to want to see, uh, 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 I'm going to want to see those, all those things that I took issue with last term. I'm still going to be working with Council Member Chavez to make sure that, um, that this project does get to a place where I feel like I can support it. Um, but as of today, um, Council Member Chavez, Council Member Johnson, Council President uh, is asking for more of an opportunity to, 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 to vet that due diligence, to, 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 to collaborate with the departments in the community. Uh, and I think that uh, given everything that I've seen from my colleagues, uh, I am feeling more confident than I was last term um, in, 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 uh, in giving time and having faith that that due diligence will be done. Um, and so uh, to all that to say, I'll be supporting the motion here before us today. And I just want to thank Council Member Chavez for all of the work that he's put in to, uh, uh, to get us here in this conversation and to make this conversation, I think, an, an especially productive one. So thank you. Thank you, Council Member Ellison. Colleagues, I do want to just really note um, that I am very cognizant of the time. We still have a um, likely fairly lengthy uh, closed session ahead of us, as well as um, a training by the Office of Emergency Management, which we know is critical as we learned in the after action review that we must be preparing ourselves for whatever future um, events um, that may occur in our community so that we can 
help to keep our communities as safe as possible. So with that in mind, I am going to ask the clerk to call the roll on the original motion put forth by Council Member Chavez. Council Member Koski. Aye. Council Member Shuktai. Aye. Council Member Chavez. Aye. Council Member Ellison. Aye. Council Member Vita. No. Council Member Rainville. No. Council Member Wansley Warlava. Aye. Council Member Goodman. No. Council Member Johnson. Aye. Council Member Osman. No. Council Member Payne. Aye. Vice President Palmasano. No. President Jenkins. Aye. There are eight ayes and five nays. That motion carries. Um, and um, our next order of business is new business, but before I move to that, I see Councilmember Chavez in queue. Councilmember Chavez. Council President Jenkins, I just want to thank all my colleagues today for giving uh, my community a shot and thank the colleagues for allowing me to show you that my community is worth a fight and I'm going to work with all of you to make sure we can get to a good place in June. Thank you all. Thank you, Councilmember. Um, we will now move to new business and we have one item today related to the mayoral regulation that rescinds the, re rescinds the requirement for face coverings in city buildings and properties. I'll recognize the city clerk to explain this matter for the body. Thank you, uh, Madam President. And as you noted at 9.30 this morning, Mayor Fry lifted the uh, regulation requiring mask mandates for city employees and being worn by all those within city managed buildings. So starting at 9.30 this morning, uh, employees and visitors who are working in or visiting city managed facilities and properties no longer will be required to wear a mask. Um, this is the response to a significant drop in the rates within the city of Minneapolis of COVID-19. Uh, our health department has been monitoring that very closely as has been reported and as of uh, March 1st, the rate of those uh, infections is down uh, enough that they feel confident to go ahead and remove the mask mandate within city owned properties. And so effective at 930 this morning, the mayor had rescinded that previous mandate for wearing of masks uh, by employees and visitors inside city properties. No action is required by the council as with the last action of this nature. However, uh, for public transparency, we want to bring it before the body and ask for that matter to be received and filed and to direct the clerks to update the record appropriately. Thank you, Mr. Clerk, and I will uh, on behalf of the council, request that the clerk's office uh, receive um, this report and um, for for public transparency and um, we will um, I think um, I don't see any opposition, so um, that regulation is received and filed. Um, we do, colleagues, we do have, a, as I stated earlier, a closed session today. Therefore, I will move uh, to the order of announcements first so that we can dispense with any announcements before the closed meeting. Are there any announcements? Council Member Rainville. Thank you, Madam President. I just want to let my colleagues know that I will be sending a resolution to the Pogo community. Uh, committee uh, uh, asking the city to not do any more business with Russia and denouncing their actions in the Ukraine. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Rainville. Are there any further announcements? Seeing none, um, I will um, Go ahead and um, state that we have a request for a closed session. This closed session 
includes two topics. First is the litigation matter of Kathy Spann et al. v. the City of Minneapolis and Mayor Jacob Fry. Second is the labor relations strategy discussion with regard to the collective bargaining agreement with the Minneapolis Police Officers Federation Unit. Uh, before I move to close um, the meeting, I'll recognize the city attorney uh, to provide the legal basis for the requested closed session. Thank you, Council President Jenkins and council members. Uh, Deputy City Attorney Eric Nilsson here. Uh, the City Attorney Jim Router is um, out of town on business. Um, there are two matters that are proposed uh, for a potential closed session before the Council today. The first, as Council President stated, is the matter of Kathy Spann et al. versus the Minneapolis City Council and Mayor Jacob Fry. It's court file 27 CV-20-10558. Uh, it is a matter of active litigation in state court. Your lawyers wish to discuss with you litigation strategy and or settlement possibilities. Accordingly, under the Minnesota Open Meeting Law, Minnesota Statutes Section 13D.05, Subdivision 3B, the council may, upon a proper motion, close the meeting for the purposes of attorney-client communication. In considering the motion, the council should weigh the right of the public to know what its government is doing against the need of the city to preserve the confidentiality of its discussions with its attorneys. The second matter, as Council President noted, is a, um, a discussion with uh, city staff and attorneys um, regarding a uh, consideration of strategy for labor negotiations involving the Minneapolis Police Officers Federation Union. Uh, the consideration of negotiation strategies or discussion and review of labor negotiation proposals may be held in a closed session pursuant to Minnesota statutes section 13D.03. In order to close the meeting under this section, a majority of the, of the council must vote to close in deciding whether to close for labor negotiation discussions. The council should weigh the right of the public to know what its government is doing against the need of the city to reserve the confidentiality of its labor negotiation strategy. Thank you, Mr. Um, Nielsen, or I'm sorry, Assistant City Attorney Nielsen. Um, and with that, I'll move that our public meeting be closed as authorized under the provisions of the open meeting law, specifically Minnesota Statute Section 13D.05 Subdivision 3B for the purpose of discussing the litigation matters of uh, Kathy Spann at all be the City of Minneapolis and Mayor Jacob Fry and Section 13D.3 to discuss labor relations strategies with regard to the proposed collective bargaining agreement with the Minneapolis Police Officers Federation for the period January 1, 2020 through December 30, 2022. May I have a second for that motion? Seconded. And I will ask the clerk to call the roll. Council Member Koski. Aye. Council Member Shuktai. Council Member Chavez. Aye. Council Member Allison. Aye. Council Member Vita. Aye. Council Member Rainville. Aye. Council Member Wansley Warlaba. Aye. Council, Council Member Goodman. Here, aye. Council Member Johnson. Aye. Council Member Osman. Aye. Council Member Payne. Aye. Council Member Shugtai. Vice President Palmasano. Aye. President Jenkins. Aye. There are 12 ayes. That carries and we will now close the public portion of our meeting and convene in closed session. For the viewing public, I'll note that the broadcast of this meeting will continue and the council will reconvene in public after we have concluded the closed session. For my colleagues, please use the separate link for the closed session to join that part of the meeting. Thank you and I will see you in closed session.
Madam President, this is Casey. It appears to me that we do have a quorum that is returned to the open forum of this public meeting of the City Council. I'll turn it back over to you. Thank you, Mrs. Clark. The time is now 1249 and the City Council has reconvened in open session following our closed session. I will ask the clerk to call the roll to verify the presence of a quorum. Council Member Koski. Present. Council Member Shuntai. Council Member Chavez. Council Member Ellison. Oh, cool. Here. Council Member Vita. Present. Council Member Rando. Present. Council Member Wansley Warlava. Council Member Goodman. Present. Council Member Johnson. Present. Council Member Osman. Present. Council Member Payne. Present. Vice President Palmasano. Present. President Jenkins. Present. There are 10 members present. Colleagues, with that, we have completed all the items on our agenda. I, I do want to just acknowledge this, this extraordinary time in Minneapolis history. Um, we haven't had a, a teacher strike for almost 50 years. So on this uh, day that we're acknowledging and, and honoring and celebrating Women's um, History um, Day, I wanna just really acknowledge that many women are deeply impacted by this uh, strike and, and having to um, figure out how to, to um, produce childcare, how to help their young people learn at home, et cetera, et cetera. And while we certainly um, respect and support workers, um, you know, some of our own colleagues on this council are experiencing um, those challenges as well. So just want to acknowledge that and really, once again, um, encourage um, the MFT and MPS to really uh, work as hard as they can to come to a resolution so that our families, our children, and and our educators can all get back to the classroom and do the things that I know that they all are um, interested in doing, and that is supporting our young people. Uh, with no further um, items to come before the council today, and without objection, I will declare this meeting adjourned. Thank you, everyone.